My demonstration for using this marine antenna on dry land was almost complete when the wind picked up, and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show you why this might be your next portable, poda, backyard portable, or permanent install antenna. It can handle a lot of wind. Don't click off this video. Give me two minutes to convince you you need to stick around for the entire video. Your first thought when you look at the thumbnail, you read the description, Bob, I don't own a boat. I'll never own a boat. I don't live near water. What on earth do I want with an HF amateur radio antenna for marine applications? Stick with me and I'll answer that question for you today. The Shakespeare 393 single sideband marine antenna is now available to us through a special relationship between Chameleon Antenna and Shakespeare. Chameleon partners with best in class organizations and now they're making this antenna available to us. It's an antenna that comes in three sections, 92 inches long each section for a total of 23 feet. Let me tell you why we would be interested in this for amateur radio. It's a given that we'll have a well-designed and precision machined mounting solution to cross over between marine applications and 3 8 by 24 studs and threads that we're used to in amateur radio. The coverage is 2 to 30 megahertz at a maximum power of 1000 watts. And here's where things begin to get interesting. I've been on deep sea fishing trips where I tried to keep my breakfast or lunch down because the captain was just tooling at top speed. These antennas are made to be on vessels which are traveling 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. So think backyard portable in a storm here in the Tampa Bay area. Wind is no problem. These are designed to withstand that type of abuse. In the ocean, what do we have? With the marine environment, we have salt water, we have corrosion. This antenna is made to handle corrosion. What do we have in the ocean? Water. And so backyard portable, when it's raining, it really doesn't matter. Now, probably every one of us has used a telescoping 17 foot antenna in our backyard, somewhere doing portable, got caught in the rain. These antennas can handle that. But when we collapse them and we bring them home, they have some water in them. And for me, I take mine, I turn it upside down in the garage for a day and I just let it dry off. Of course, I guess I could wipe it off when I'm out there operating before I collapse it, but it probably still has some moisture in it. Not an issue with the 393. Before I show you some setups in the backyard and some performance on using this 393, we need to talk about how you're going to connect this, how you're going to use this antenna. We're used to our 3 8 by 24 male studs and female threads in our amateur radio way of life. If you are a person that is used to being on the water, whether it's the ocean or a large lake, you might be used to these type of marine adapters. I don't know what that thread size is. It's bigger than my thumb. It's rather large. And never shall these two meet because these are used in railing systems on boats and a lot of um, marine antennas are used to dealing with this type of an antenna mount. And also when you get into the marine environment, your ocean is your ground plane so you don't have a normal grounding system. How are we going to cross between these two which have never been combined before? Well, enter chameleon antenna with this stainless steel adapter. It may look like a single adapter. It's actually two in one. It's a 3 8 by 24 male stud on the top and a 3 8 by 24 female on the bottom. But it unscrews and now you actually have two adapters in one. So let me just quickly show you here desktop what you have and then we'll go back to our portable and illustrate it. So if you wanted to take a typical antenna that we're used to using on dry land, backyard portable, POTA, and um, it has a 3 8 by 24 stud on the bottom of it to attach it to your ground spike. Well now, if you wanted to put something like this on an ocean vessel, um, your boat on the lake, and you wanted to use another antenna that's already in your kit, you would use this adapter, which goes on top of these threads, 
and then it has 3 8 by 24 on the top, and now you get the idea. This is how you would utilize this on a boat. Well, go beyond that. You know me, I like dual purpose things. So these are some of the beefiest mounting systems I have ever seen in my life. I don't know what this weighs. It's a couple of pounds. It is incredibly strong. Start thinking application on land at your home, attaching this to a deck, attaching it to a wall. And now all of a sudden you actually have some applications to use existing amateur radio gear in installations in ways you never had before with the utilization of an unbelievably strong mounting system and an adapter. And oh, by the way, this has two pivot points. Loosen this lock nut and this will pivot back and forth this direction while the plate stays solid. And then this also pivots. So you have the ability to pivot in multiple directions, or I should say both planes. So that's one of the first applications is you can use this on a boat and then convert it over to 3 8 by 24 that we're used to, or you can take this type of setup and use it at your home in some place before that you've never been able to put any antenna because you never had a way to attach it to a deck or a wall and this will get that job done. Well, what are you going to do when you have a marine antenna like the Shakespeare 393 and you have no way to go backyard portable with it because all we have is 3 8 by 24. Well, what we have now is the ability to take this, which I don't have the 393 here with me right now because it's already in the backyard. It screws on top of this male threaded stud and then it can go into the 3 8 by 24 ground mount that we are used to. So I'll show you some practical illustrations and you'll get the idea. There are a number of configuration options, both for how you would install this in the ground or on a tripod, as well as the various types of ununs or tuners that you can use. Take my illustrations as examples only and use your creativity to get the most out of an antenna system like this. That's one of the most fun things about amateur radio is experimenting for what's best for you. This ground spike here I'm going to use with this pivot mount and I'll probably do an HOA specific um, video on this because that's a really cool piece of kit. Of course, I've already talked about installing this. Forget about a boat for a second. Those of you who have boats and you're used to antennas, this is already intuitive. You know what you're doing. This is a great opportunity to get antennas up at your house in a way you haven't been able to before. Let's talk about connecting our antennas to our radios. So we're going to start with this. It's probably the thing that's least familiar to some of you. This of course is going to go to your coax back to your shack. You're probably going to be using a shack tuner at this point in time if you choose this. This is going to the termination band on the antenna itself and that is the center conductor the center conductor. And then this is your coax shield or your grounding side. And we all know that our coax shield in here is part of the grounding system. So one of these is going to the grounding side, the other to the center conductor. And this is what it would look like if you actually did this installation in your backyard or somewhere in a permanent installation, or you chose to do this for some portable operation. You're going to be taking the ground to the grounding system of your setup, and you're going to be taking the center conductor to the termination band on the antenna itself. In my setup, I did use both of these four to one ununs, and then I did set up also with the URT1. It's a remote tuner from Chameleon. It can be used with any transceiver. So that's why this is one of my favorites. So this would be my favorite installation and this would be my least favorite installation. And only for one reason. Those who watch the channel know I'm a huge fan of banana plug radials. That radial system and bundle back there has a banana plug on it. I like banana plug radials. So I use these terminals an awful lot in my setups. Well, the only reason that I didn't care for this LDG is because you can't take this top screw section off. This little plastic cap <laughs> doesn't unscrew. So I couldn't use my ring terminal and I had to put a spade terminal there and had to change my setup. And the same reason also when I tried to create the connection between my termination band on the antenna and the unun itself, 
on the positive side, again, same problem. So I had to make a custom jumper to go from the termination band of the antenna to this on it. That's the only reason I didn't care for this. Of course, I like how small it is. I did set it up anyway, and you can see here with this particular installation, I have my jumper going from the positive side to the termination band, and then I'm using the grounding radials coming from the four to one on on. Now, the Chameleon 4 to 1 Unun, um, I have, you know, of course, friends in amateur radio because I've spent, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars with equipment and purchases creating my channel and creating followers who enjoy what I do. I've spent thousands upon thousands of hours doing this. And so every once in a while, somebody comes to me and says, hey, Bob, would you like this? And uh, I want to say thanks um, to Bill Stanwick who provided me with this mounting plate for the back of my four to one unun. And so I'm able to actually then connect this to the antenna itself and create a shorter jumper from the positive side up to the termination band of the antenna. And I'm using the grounding side of this to attach my ground radials. But of course, my favorite installation is the URT1 because you get your match right at the antenna itself. It's a known fact that when you use a remote antenna tuner, you get the match at the antenna. That's where you're loading it up. And so your losses on your coax run into your station are minimal. You get the maximum power output to the antenna. That is one of the benefits of the URT1. The URT1 utilizes a control box in the inside of the shack that can attach to any radio. It is not radio specific, and it is sending the power and the signal to tune over the shield of your coax. This is one of my favorite pieces of gear. And you can see here that I chose to put the URT1 onto the antenna and put it on my portamast. And oh my, <laughs> what a pretty impressive looking antenna here in my backyard yard at my home that's governed by a homeowners association. So I'm 20 feet up in the air with the portamast and another 23 feet with the antenna itself. Now, this is not staying up long because this attracts far too much attention from my neighbors. I put it up for illustration purposes so you can understand what you can possibly pull off with this particular antenna if you have all the appropriate gear. With the antenna connected to the Cha 4 to 1 Unun and the ground spike, I decided to come into the shack and turn things on. Here I am early evening on 40 meters. <laughs> it looks pretty impressive. Of course, we're interested in making contacts. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. I'm on tonight. 5-9, Tampa, Florida. Thanks for Tampa, 73. CQ Party, Kilo Oscar 4, November, Lima, Lima. I had this set up in the middle of the day with some spare time, so I jumped on FT8 on both 10 meters and 20 meters and had no problem responding to CQ and calling CQ myself and being heard. I also ran this 24 hours on a whisper test and on 10 meters down through 20 meters got very respectable results. On 40 meters, I always do quite well with my vertical antennas both in the US and over into Europe. 80 meters, not much here. And I don't know if it would have been better if I had used the URT1. I was on the four to one unun at this point, but for this size vertical, I guess I didn't have a lot of uh, hope for 80 meters. Again, I think I'd like to try this sometime with the URT1. Here is the whisper map of all bands over a 24 hour period of time. I should say 10 through 80. You won't be strapping this on your back for soda, but it's respectable for POTA, backyard, and portable ops. Because it's 3 8 by 24 on the top section, you have a standalone top section you can use with another piece of antenna gear. It also means that you can use something like a cap hat on top of the second section. It means you can put an SS-17 on top of that second section. How about an SS-25? Here we have a lot of adaptability. I've demonstrated the SS Marine adapter for use with the CHA survey adapter along with my DeWalt tripod. This 
tripod can keep almost anything up in the air. I kept it upright for ease of use of getting the adapter installed and then when I actually wanted to get the antenna completely screwed on I did spread the legs out and get it closer to the ground. I've used the marine adapter with the topper on my portamast to really get this high up into the air. I've used the marine adapter directly connected to the cha ground spike and because I have this super soft soil here in Tampa Bay I'm just able to pick the whole thing up and insert it into the ground. And then finally I used this pivot marine mount which went directly to the cha ground spike and this I'm going to demonstrate in a future HOA specific application. A stainless steel adapter that lets us take marine antennas and use them on dry land or take the typical dry land antennas, our 3 8 by 24 that we're used to on our ham way of life and cross them over to our boats. I don't know in a boat. I wasn't gonna buy a boat for this particular video. Of course not. Those of you who are on boats and are already used to these types of thread sizes for railings, you've already thought of many ways that you can now take this and adapt 3 8 by 24 antennas that you already have and use them on your boat. I'm thinking of the opposite of that, how to take a marine antenna like the 393 and now use it backyard portable here in my homeowners association. I'm teasing that because I'll certainly do a follow-up video here in the HOA with some specific applications and specific mounts that would make that very adaptable to this environment. This antenna is small enough to go with you on a POTA activation. Some people, you know, you're ultra conservative, ultra light, ultra small. Well, this is an ultra small, but many people have no problem throwing gear in the bed of their pickup truck or the back of their SUV. This antenna would certainly fit that environment. You can take it out to a POTA activation, field day, some portable use, and you have a very strong antenna that can handle whatever weather comes at it during that day. Strong winds, not a problem. Rain, not a problem. This antenna is made to handle those environments. Remember, it's made for marine use. I'm gonna say it's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches in diameter, made of fiberglass. So it's light enough weight to be able to carry around, but because of its size and because it's made out of fiberglass, thick wall fiberglass, it is incredibly strong. So again, the use case here, you may be thinking, why would I want a marine antenna? Well, it's going to put out RF like any other antenna. The marine part of it is the durability and then these threaded posts that we're not used to the size. Well, we don't have to be used to it anymore because we've got adapters to deal with that. So in the HOA, great backyard portable. POTA, absolutely. Permanent antenna in your backyard, absolutely. So I was a little bit of a skeptic at first. All it took me was my first installation and use. I'm sold. I think it's a pretty awesome antenna. And then the SS, the stainless steel marine adapters, it makes it usable in all kinds of circumstances. I've just tried to illustrate a few of them for you. Remember, take my ideas, multiply them, through your ham way of life and find new ways to install far beyond anything that I've illustrated. Drop a comment below of some other way that you think this could possibly be set up. And um, maybe I'll give one of those a try and show that in the future. Thanks for watching, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.